Hey everyone, welcome to our 30th episode of Brew Talk with Mr. Beer. 30 episodes in so far, it's flown by so fast. Uh, thank you guys for watching. My name is Robert Lewis, I'll be your host for today's show. Um, appreciate you taking the time to watch us. Thank to, or thanks for taking the time to watch us every week. It's really cool that uh, you guys keep watching, engaging with us, it's really fun. Uh, before I dive into our topic, got a few things to touch on. One, if you have any ideas or questions that you wanna see us talk about, we can have Ashley back, we can have Zach back on. If you've got questions about hops, yeast, anything particular, let us know. Drop comments in the post, send us an email, chat with customer service, say, hey, I'd love to see this topic talked about because I'm curious about this, want to learn more about this, et cetera, et cetera. Um, second housekeeping is always, what am I drinking today? I'm actually not going to tell you what I'm drinking today because it's new. So this will be coming out tomorrow, so keep it on your inbox for some new stuff. If you're part of our Facebook group, you already know what I'm drinking. It's a new refill that we are coming out with. Um, we have three new recipes as well that are coming out tomorrow. Um, if you're on our Facebook, if you're not in our Facebook group, join the group. You can see what we're talking about, what we're posting, and where you can find it at. If not, uh, check your inbox tomorrow morning. You will get an email telling you about the three new recipes we got out, plus a new refill that we're super, super excited about. It's really good, it's really awesome. Probably one of the better ones that you know we've come out with. A lot of people in the office think it's the best one here. I like our pale ale as my personal favorite, and I still haven't been able to find one that's better than that because I like the bitter beers in life, and I always like the, the, the pale ales. I mean, that's just me. Um, all right, so enough of that nonsense. Uh, today's topic is how to keep your fermenter warm during winter, because obviously it's getting colder. Uh, winter is finally here. I know most of the country is having some extremely cold weather, cold temperatures, um, unless you live in Tucson, Arizona. It's been a freezing cold 78 degrees the last few days. Um, I finally had to roll my sleeves down. So, you know, we're, we're struggling down here. Uh, so, I mean, I think it's a lot of times like we have the issues during summer where it's too hot. And one of a lot of people have the issues where it just gets too cold and they can't, they can't keep their fermenter warm because the way their house is set up, the way they got heaters set up, all that stuff like that. So temperature is the most important part of creating great beer. We discuss it all the time. We always hammer home the proper range for that temperature and what it should be at. You know, if your temperature is too low, it can cause your yeast, your yeast to either work extremely slow, which then your beer won't fully ferment, or your yeast will just go dormant and go to sleep if it's too cold, and then you're, you'll not get anything. You get like half beer, it'll be gross. Um, you want that. So just a reminder, ideal temperature range for brewing with our products is 68 to 78 degrees. And the best spot to be at between that is between 70 and 72. I know this can get debated a lot, but this is where we test everything that we brew to put on the site in the office. We've done countless tests and countless things that define that right range. We partner with, with Coopers who creates the yeast and they do all that stuff and create the malt extract and everything else that they do. I mean, they're a huge brewery in Australia. They know what they're doing. So we really work with them and do, and do our own testing here to make sure that that is the right range. So 68 to 78 is where you want to be. 70 to 72 is ideal where you will get the best results guaranteed. We can taste the difference in the office between a two and four degrees. It's insane. Um, okay, so let's get to some ways to keep your fermenter warm. Now, all of these you're gonna to wanna to have to play with because everyone's setup is a little different. Your house is a little different. Airflow is a little different. Everything's a little different. So what might work for one person might not work for another person. So always test everything before you do something, before you commit to brewing a batch. Test it with some water, see what temps you can hold. Um, you know, it just really helps you make sure that everything is gonna line up right and you're gonna get good beer. Um, also, depending on what fermenter you're using, some of these may or, or may not work because depending on the size of them, they're different things. But different things, plastic, glass, et cetera, et cetera. The simplest one that we see people start to use and that people use is they just cover their fermenter with a nice, warm, cozy blanket. You know, you snuggle them up a little bit, make sure they're all nice and toasty. Um, or if you can put it in like an insulated box or like a storage container or something like that, basically during fermentation, the fermenter is gonna give off heat on its own. Meaning you have like vigorous fermentations, you have a temperature strip, you'll see that heat increase because it's just going crazy. So using like a blanket, using like a storage container that's kind of insulated will help keep the heat around the fermenter and also help the fermenter not expense like so much of the heat out into the air. So kind of just hold it in there. It will help just naturally keep the air temperature around it warm, which will thus keep your fermenting temperature warm. So that's kind of an easy trick to do. You know, if you're like a few degrees off, throw a, a nice Snuggie on it and you'll be, uh, you'll be good to go. Um, so that works really well. Um, another one that you can do is uh, there's something that they're called firm wraps that are out there. Um, these on Amazon, other places. These are really good for using like, like a glass carboy. I haven't used them with plastic, so I can't say that they will or will not work or not get too hot. I don't know, it's basically just like a heating coil kind of pad that wraps around your fermenter, uh, sticks to it, and you can adjust the temperatures on there for how warm you need it, and it'll warm up 
your batch was really cool, super easy. Uh, you can also buy a brew belt, which works extremely well if you're brewing like a carboy, plastic carboy, glass carboy, or like uh, our, one of our brew maps fermenters. It just wraps around it and kind of just, again, ferments out some heat and does stuff like that. We've used it for like kombucha and stuff in the office, and, we, and we've had them um, for use before. Um, I think the thing that works the best, especially if you're using like an LBK, is the they, they have these heating mats that they sell. Basically, it's like, like a heating pad. It's a little mat. Plug it in, put your fermenter right on top of it. Works super well for the LBK. You can kind of adjust the dials on there. They're like under $20 on Amazon. So, you know, if you're worried about your temperature and you want to make sure you're hitting the right range, it's well worth the investment and, in, you know, all the time you're, you're going to be spending drinking and brewing beer for the holidays. You want to make sure that it is warm. So, you know, I think that is just probably one of the best things that you can do. Um, you can also t test some spots around your house. You might have like a warm room or, room, or, or a warm corner. I've, sometimes I heard spots on top of people's fridges get really warm, so they put their fermenters up there. Just be careful when you're moving everything. Like I said earlier, you want to make sure that you test it before you actually brew, so you're not having to move your fermenter throughout the house, throughout the course of fermentation. Also, if you don't have a temperature strip, get a temp strip and throw it on that bad boy. It worked really well. It's just that kind of peace of mind that lets you know that you are doing the right things and brewing the right things and being in the right temp. And you're making great beer, because temperature is probably the number one factor that will, besides having cleanliness stills and sanitizing everything properly that will result in you making good, great, or terrible beer. Um, it's just, it's crazy. Um, so it's going to wrap it up for today. We appreciate you guys taking the time to watch us. Um, we hope you learned something. Um, if you did, please give us a like, share, subscribe, thumbs up, comments, whatever platform you're watching on, whatever thing you can do on there. Just do it. We appreciate it. Um, let's just know that you guys are appreciate the content we're putting out. Uh, we do post our videos on our blog page, mrbeer.com slash blog. You can find them on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash mrbeer, Facebook page, facebook.com slash mrbeer, Instagram, instagram.com slash mrbeer, and on our Pinterest page as well for those of you that like to pin things. Um, also, if you want to learn more about Mr. Beer or just brewing in general, like I mentioned earlier, join our Facebook group. We're starting to kind of release some things early in there. We're going to start giving a little more stuff going on in there, make it a little more fun and exciting and kind of exclusive people that want to join the group and participate and comment and stuff like that. When we're approaching 600 members, it's doing really, really well. I mean, there's lots of posts daily in there, lots of questions, great engagement. Um, it's a place where you can just come, ask questions, get an answer. It works super well. Uh, we, we really appreciate it. And it's really a way for us to touch base with our new brewers and all the new people that we'll be getting in and for our existing brewers to kind of connect with our new brewers as well and just sort of grow, share tips. I know a lot of people like to work on their labels. You guys are doing some cool graphics, some cool pictures, some cool artwork. I love seeing the pictures in there. We do borrow some of those for social media, which is awesome. So I appreciate you guys watching us. Thanks for taking the time today. And um, we'll see you guys next week. Cheers.